Gentlemen, good morning. How are you? Good, thank you. Good, thank you. Good. Congratulations on the film. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, one thing I wanted to ask you very first was about the London Film Festival and you got to premiere the film there. I was just wondering for you both, how exciting was it to, to be in amongst an audience again and to, to celebrate cinema? Because it's been a little while since I've been able to do it and covering the festival myself, it seemed like people had this even bigger appetite to go back to the cinema and to have the community experience. How important is it for you that this film plays in cinemas and that you know cinema is, is kind of back and everyone can enjoy the magic of cinema again? Yeah, it's huge. I mean, for me, for the London Film Festival is really special because I've been going there since moving to London uh, to go to film school. And there's so many times that I've been sitting in the audience watching, you know, these movies and thinking one day, oh, I hope I get to make films that are projected on these screens and I get to be part of LFF. So I've, and I've had that with a few shorts in my last feature. So it always feels like a really special homecoming. And yeah, we made this film to be seen on the big screen. You know, it's set in these big, vast, almost mythically grand landscapes. Um, and so it feels like the right space for it. And to watch it, you know, collectively, you know, with an audience, it's a, the film, you know, it's about certain adult themes, um, at, you know, but it's also a thrill ride, you know, and there's lots of, there's humor in it. And you could, to be in the cinema and hear the laughs and gasps uh, and sustained silence at dramatic moments, I think that collective experience is just you can't replicate when you're watching it at home and so to experience that in a cinema you know it kind of reminds you about why we go to movies to have that collective experience with other people yeah and Riz for you I understand you uh playfully stalked Michael to to maybe be in his next his next film I just wondered for you as an actor obviously it's a fantastic part and this family dynamic but this is wonderful kind of fusion of all these different genres and all these types of kind of filmmaking. I just wanted for you, how exciting is that for you as an actor to kind of keep you on your toes that you get to, to get to do a whole lot of different things in one, one story. Yeah. It's really exciting. You know, I remember reading the script and just being on the edge of my seat, even reading it. I remember watching Michael's last film and being on the edge of my seat watching it. And so I was just really eager to be part of this project. Yes. From an acting point of view, there's a lot of layers to Malik Khan um, just from a filmmaking point of view, wanting to work with someone like Michael, who's got such command over multiple genres. It's a kind of family portrait. It's a relationship drama um, about a family and the love in that family, but also this kind of thrill ride, you know, with a kind of thriller, mystery, kind of action elements to it. Uh, and also, I guess, just in terms of, you know, um, someone who really believes in film's ability to kind of hold a mirror up to society. I felt mm. like this was an important film. It's a road trip really, but it's a road trip through the heart of right now. You know, it's, I remember when we were shooting this, you know, we had everyone behind the camera was in biohazard suits because of COVID. I remember oh, wow. the, the sky was bright red um, because of the California forest fires. I remember, you know, there was security on set because it was the, you know, the peak of the election cycle in America and it was such a divided time. So, it was very apparent when we were making this film that, um, you know, the, the themes within this film about infection and an unseen threat and, you know, a landscape that's teetering on the edge of apocalypse and, and a divided society, they, they were really urgent. And so I just really believe that this is a, an important film for people to see. It's, uh, you know, it's showing us a way through all of these kind of challenges that we're facing right now. And really that way is you know, to get through it together, to get through it with love, to get through it with compassion, you know, when we're facing these very kind of quite terrifying challenges. Yeah. And Michael, for you, I understand the script was kind of circulating a bit before you came on board. How much did it change when you came on board? Was the story kind of very much the same when you started shooting or had you changed quite a lot of it or was it minimal changes in between? Um, uh, I did bring a lot to it. I mean, it was a really fortunate circumstance where the script had kind of found its feet and the characters. Um, and I love the, the journey that they went on and the dynamic between them. But I think because I identified, you know, with a lot of the, the, the family dynamic, you know, had a lot of resonances with my own upbringing that I wanted to bring a lot of that into the story. Like I was the kind of older child in this family situation that had a younger brother and that could be have explosive arguments with my dad and I had to help reconcile 
uh, their relationship, but they also, the three of us were also incredibly close and I wanted to make a film that sort of studied that family dynamic and looked at the sort of connection and warmth and forgiveness and learning that goes on between the three of these guys. And so I wanted to put that in it. And I also just saw, you know, there was a, just an opportunity to amplify the, uh, the genre elements that were kind of always there under the surface of mm. the script and were always really exciting. But I just thought the film could be even more ambitious in some ways. And so I turned up the, the dial on, on some of that. But always try to, you know, I'd go back to Joe's original script to make sure that, you know, that's what I fell in love with at the beginning. And I wanted to honor that feeling that I had. Uh, so I'd vacillate between doing my drafts and then going back to Joe's and just trying to make sure that I continued to capture that he, uh, you know, what he had written so beautifully. Yeah. And this is a, this is a question for both of you. I'm going to direct it to you first, Riz. Um, this year, and especially in the last few months, there's been so many amazing young actors slash child performances on the screen. I mean, there's been incredible stuff. You know, the kid that's in Come On, Come On is amazing. But these two boys that play your boys in the film are extraordinary. I just wonder what it was like for you, because they say never work with kids. But I can imagine this was this was fun. But also to see them bring these two characters to life, that must have been an amazing mm. experience. Yeah, I think the reason they say never work with kids or animals isn't because it's chaos, it's because they're better than you. <laughs> like these kids just kind of every day were just schooling me, honestly, because when you work with young actors, they're not jaded. They all, mm -hmm. They're just bringing such an honesty and an authenticity to the table. And I would say that Aditya, who plays Bobby, and Lucian River, who plays Jay, they couldn't be more different as kids and in terms of their, their process. You know, Aditya would be constantly rewriting the script, just riffing. So much of his dialogue is improvised. You know, he spent a lot of, I'd say, the shoot kind of saying, guys, I've done it once now. Can we finish this up? Can we wrap this up? And it's like, it's true. You nailed it first time, but we, we're not as good as you. Um, whereas Lucian River was someone who was just, you know, such a kind of refined artist already at the age of 11. I would go home more motivated seeing the amount of dedication and commitment he brings to set. Um, and so, yeah, they were just, it was a kind of amazing learning experience. Um, and also an important lesson in like when you should and shouldn't eat sweets on set, uh, you know, Bobby and these guys, they can do it. They can just be like smashing the skittles all day and just <laughs> go in there and work. When I start joining them on those snacks, we're in problems. You know, I start, I'm kind of dozing off on set and stuff. So, um, yeah, it was an amazing experience, really. And I think they've got fantastic careers ahead of them. Yeah, it really absolutely. also diffused a lot of the uh, the sort of latent tension that COVID brought. I mean, all of us, you know, the cast and the crew, we, you know, it was such a uh, dark cloud that was hanging over us. We never thought, you know, we never knew when we were going to get shut down, if we would get shut down. Uh, and it was a big safety concern. But because it was, you know, both of their first movies and just because they got such... Uh, captivating um, powerful energies as children it really just took away a lot of that tension it made you so it, instead of kind of being daunted by going into the set every day and wondering if we're going to be able to make it work through this you know these difficult circumstances they made it a joy and whatever people warn me about how difficult it could be work you know to work with children some of them could potentially be you know some kid, child actors are quite precocious or they can be difficult or they maybe even have big egos you know for their age these two kids were the opposite of that. You know, they were so generous with each other. Uh, they were so enthused with, with like, not just every day's work, but every scene and every shot, they were so invested in it. Um, and they were just, they were very, they were like, they have a high degree of emotional intelligence. I didn't have to speak to them in so, some sort of coded, you know, child active way. You know, I just spoke to them like they were a peer, you know, to me and Riz, you know, just treated them like any other fellow actor. And so they made it, they took, you know, a lot of the difficulty of working with children, they kind of flipped it on its head and they made our shoot much easier in some ways. Fantastic, that's nice to hear. Guys, thank you so much for your time. Absolute pleasure. And uh, good thank luck you. with the film when it comes out. Thank Cheers. You. Thanks, Thanks a lot. Cheers. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Hey You Guys. Hey You Guys, huh? Hey you guys, Is yeah. that from the Goonies? It is indeed, yeah. Nice. Hey!